Lead. Hercules. Yes! Stop recording. Stop recording. Hello, welcome to Flip My Ride. Glad you could join me. I'm Adam. If you're new here, welcome. For those who follow me regularly, g'day. Welcome back. We are currently working our way through this uh, 1984 Subaru Touring Wagon is what this is called. Um, generally known as a Subaru GL Wagon or a DL Wagon. This is the premium model with uh, a bump in the roof, full plush velour interior and a factory sunroof, rather rare. So far we have restored the original wheels, put some new tyres on it, we have peeled off the shocking old tints and I have done some touch up rust repair and touch up paint on the door sills and on a few joins and seals or seams I should say on the car that were corroding. Today we are going to focus on the mechanical side of the old Subi. We're going to give it a service, um, some new belts and just some general maintenance stuff and a few other things that need addressing as well. So let's head off and get into it and we'll catch you later. Enjoy. Oh, and a little bit of housekeeping. If you like what I produce, if you like my content, if you like my adventures, if you like all the stuff I do, I'm gonna ask for three little things. Could you like the videos? Could you please subscribe? I stopped asking, but I'm gonna start asking because I wanna get to 5,000 by the end of 2023. And I can't keep doing this on my own. So if you would like to help, donate that would be absolutely wonderful to help me continue doing and producing the content and saving the relics or these classic nuggets these unicorns just like this now to the servicing Service first, and it's out with the old folks. I removed the airbox so I can degrease a little more and get better access to the pulleys and anything else that may need attention. Let's clean. There's one down there, what's that other one? This is when Jordan goes and buys a hoist. <laughs> oh shit. Fuck me! Hercules! Oh. God, you gotta wonder sometimes. Oh. Oh, don't you dare. Oh, there's a, a crush washer getting buried. Fell off late. That is black and almost sludgy. It's like the black hole of Calcutta. You feel it? It's like thick. A bit like your ex girlfriend. Very fun. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Alright, I'll get rid of that and then we'll do the gear oil. Eh? The plugs are in. Jordan's done the plugs, I've just dropped the engine oil. It's pretty black and very thick and gluggy, so that hopefully the, um, there's no sludge in the motor, but I can't tell. And yeah, we'll do the gearbox next. While you watch me struggle with the fuel filter here, I can tell you we dropped the gear oil and it was almost new looking. I'd say somebody did the oil change just before the car went into storage to address the third gear issue. We struggled also to find the gearbox fill bolt before we noticed that it has a dipstick, just like an auto. That's a first for me. All right, let's tighten that up. Time for new fluids. Now, this is one. This is my ultimate tool. The dipstick. The fucking gearbox. Don't think we get it out. How much do you reckon came out? A couple of litres? Yeah, maybe two. See, I can't do what you do. I need light. I'm, I'm blind. blind. 
I'm old and blind. Here's a torch doing its own thing over here. <laughs> no one around. The bottom radiator hose was also cooked, so we had to replace that too. This will be interesting to see. I'm just hoping nothing up here is crowed badly. The good thing is it's not... Even that's not too bad, Jordan, eh? No, it's not too bad. No, it's been done a, not, not too long ago. We are making a executive decision at the moment on the the drive shaft CV boots. They are not in the best of conditions. We're not sure, and we don't know if we want to get that into it. And plus, sliding new CV boots on, uh, it ain't no cherry pie. It's a fucking, it's shit. We tried to do it last year on a Mazda with it we restored, if you want to check that out. And um, we had a good laugh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it your was not... Was, your dad was here. It was not a good day. So I think we'll just sit on it for a while. We're going to dwell on it. We're going to mull it over. Mull it over I did indeed for about two bloody weeks and then decided, nope, it's got to be done. So let's do it. Oh. Hey, thank fuck for that. There we go, gotcha. What a prick. I need a bar, push that down. I need to get that end out, put the nut on here, belt that in. Using the correct ball joint tool finally enabled me to drop the lower control arm. Next, I had to disconnect the drive shaft from the box. They are attached via what's called a roll pin and using a hole punch or an old drill bit, hit it out and remove completely. Then pull the shaft from the gearbox end first. Move it to the side and start belting the hell out of it with a big mallet to knock it through the hub assembly. Oh. Oh. You fucking beauty! Oh! Yes! Oh! Um. It was just, I needed the right tools, and I don't have the tools, so I went and bought the tools. And voila! Um, had the better of me the other day. It's had the better of me for a couple of weeks. Right, I'm going to take that down to a dude to have a look at it and see if he can actually fix it because apparently these are hard to buy now. They're rare. Like the car. Anyway, step one step further forward. Awesome. First chance I had, I dropped the shaft off to Australian CV Joints and Power Steering. They were super professional and had the job done the same day and for just 80 bucks. Winning! I wish the reinstall had been that easy. Things nearly went very wrong. All right, that was an absolute prick of a job because I've never done it on a Subaru before. Um, the problem with these particular drive shafts is that they have, the spline doesn't run all the way through from the the end of the CV joint through your hub, the hub assembly. Um, normally, there's a spline. A spline normally runs all the way through, but this has an old-fashioned, um, like a, a what do I, how do I explain it? It's a smooth piece of drive shaft that has to fit through a bearing, so there's tolerance there. And I didn't want to go bashing into my new fixed CV joints. And, to, and I nearly stuffed up the, the, the bolting of it onto the gearbox through the, where the roll pin goes. Saved my ass there, but um, I just had to keep tapping and tapping and tapping away around the hub to get the uh, drive shaft through the bearing 
and out far enough so I could get the threads on and put it all together. And then of course the brakes, thinking that that'd be easy, the brake pads had um, eased out under hydraulic pressure, I guess, with the clutch fluid. So the gap between the, the brake pads wasn't enough to go back over the rotor. Took me about like an half an hour to work that out. And then I had to take the pads out. I put everything back on, lifted up the slider and turns out that you have to push, well, this particular I thought it would be an easy job, but this was actually probably harder than pulling it out. You've got to do these things to learn, but I don't like it. <laughs> Look at me, I'm an absolute freaking mess. All right, I'm going to keep going. With the drive shaft back where it belongs, I took the Unicorn for a few runs in my local streets and I noticed it was running pretty warm. The temperature was about three quarters on the gauge. So next I tackled the thermostat, Turns out the old one had a broken arm and it wasn't opening fully. Okay, got it. Pop out the old, pop in the new, install a new gasket, don't forget that. Button it all up and don't forget to top up your radiator fluids afterwards. Not a hard job, just a bit fiddly and messy. Uh, next I'm going to do a clutch adjustment. The clutch rides or it engages very high. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I've watched a few videos. I'm gonna tinker with the cable. There's a little cable here. You've gotta take off the lock nut and then adjust the cable itself and then relock it. And I'll give it a test run as I try it. Um, hopefully I haven't got any grease on my ass when I hop in the car. Locking nut and adjuster. So we'll undo this and then we'll adjust this one. We'll hop in the car and see. We have, but not enough. All right. So we've got the whole cable moving here. I don't think that's meant to happen. So we'll try and pinch, we'll nip this and see if we can wind that in. I'm gonna hold it like this and see if we can turn this. Yeah, see? So I'm winding the rod in, is it? All right. See how that goes. I've adjusted the clutch, I haven't locked it fully in. Let's see if we can fire it up and give it a go. It's even worse. That's, wor that's worse, so what I'm gonna do is let the cable out. If I wound that in, I'm gonna wind that out. Yes, I had no idea here, but if you have ever played with the brake or clutch cable on a bike, be it motorbike or push bike, the principle is the same. Just try that. Initially, I wound the adjustment screw clockwise, winding it in, and the clutch engaged a lot higher or later, which I did not like. So winding it out or counterclockwise did the trick for me. Because it's loose now, it's a bit easy to adjust. 
try that. This may take several attempts, but when you are completely happy, tighten it all up. There is also a small spring you need to remove firstly, do your adjustments and then install when finished. That helps keep tension on the whole mechanism. I've taken the car out for a couple of runs and it's just not feeling or sounding right. Um, I did put ATF or automatic transmission fluid in the gearbox slash diff to help with the crunchy gear but I don't think that's going to work. Um, I reckon it could cause more problems. There's a bit of a noise from the box or the diff. So I'm going to change it back to good quality, um, proper gearbox and diff oil. The other issue is when I'm driving, it, it feels a bit flat in a few spots. It idles high and it sounds like it's pinging. So we could have some issues. So before I can adjust the timing, I've got to check a few things. Firstly, this doesn't run points. It runs what's called an air gap. I've just learnt that. <laughs> and I need to put a feeler gauge in there and make an adjustment. I've got to take the air filter off, distributor cap off, get it turned so that the gap, well the two points, just like points, uh, where they need to be, and test the gauge. So let's do that. All right, so this is inside the distributor. Normally there'd be a set of points here, but this is different. I've not seen this before. And we've got to have a gap between this point, which is magnetized, I think, and this point here. So this is obviously where your spark transfers. I think. So I've rotated the engine until I've gotten it to the point where these two meet and then I put my gauge through there and we're meant to have between 0.17 and 0.20 and I've got a 0.20 gauge and that's a little tight but it's pretty good so that means it's probably around the 0.18 something like that which is within range so I've got to get that correct first before I can move on to the next phase which is adjusting the idle screw and the idle speed or the mixture and the idle speed on the car before I can move on to checking the timing so you've got all these things have got to be right so that we can check the timing so let's move on to the carby all our hoses back on hey hey time to tune and time to time <laughs> all right I'm tinkering with it but I'll just the idle screw the um, idle speed screw is not making an adjustment which means it's too far out in my opinion so I need to um, maybe screw right down on the idle mixture then I can play with the idle yeah maybe I'll do that I'm, I'm experimenting here I've read about it and I've done this before but um, yeah I'm no expert there are set procedures and specifications for your particular car Google or a workshop manual should sort you out if you do not know them. Alright, that's on 800. Now I need to do the... After nearly two hours, I think I got it close. Well, pretty close anyway. Further reading, the timing is at the back of the engine here directly on the flywheel. I'm used to timing a car at the front on the pulley. You've got to pull a little rubber cap off and you've got to get the markings set because it's hard to see and it's actually very faint in there. Anyway, you've got to mark that flywheel first with some paint and then you check it once you start after you've done the idle adjustment and the mixture and all that shit anyway so i've just opened up the plug and farted about a bit and kept turning it and cranking it and i found someone has marked it which is really really handy i've managed to get the car between 750 and 850 rpm which is what it requires at 800 and i uh, it sounds okay it's not coughing and spitting and it's not revving over revving so I don't know it's the best as I can do now we're going to try and time it so uh, that's pretty that's way way um, oh, what's the word fuck what's the word retarded <laughs> it's way retarded like me So I'm guessing I've got to advance it and then make my adjustments again. Tedious. 
give me ECU. So we've got to adjust the distributor now because we're pretty much probably three or four degrees retarded. But I don't know about you, Subaru I thought was pretty clever. But fancy this. There's the belt. There's my distributor and there's the nut I've got to undo. And I'm meant to manually adjust this while checking the timing. How do you do that? There's a belt in the way. It'll shred everything, including my hands. Start it, check it, stop it, start it, stop it, start it. Anyway, um, yeah. Boxer engines. Not that clever. Oh, and the fanboys will hate me for that. <laughs> to advance the timing to the necessary specs, loosen the distributor and move it a couple of centimetres at a time clockwise. In this particular instance, be careful and don't have the car running. That's pretty good where it is. How's that for a landing? Nip it up gently and recheck your timing. When it is to spec, gingerly tighten properly, being careful not to move the dizzy more whilst tightening. Alright, we'll go for a run and we'll see how it goes, eh? I don't know. Still feels crappy. Doesn't help there's holes in the exhaust everywhere and I can hardly hear what I need to hear. go for a while and see how it runs over time. Let home, eh? Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, I got home fine, and just to wrap up everything to do with the mechanical side of the car, I have since gone ahead and done the brakes. I've bled them all. The pads and everything are really good, but they needed a bleed because they were spongy as hell, so a lot of air and a lot of gunk in the fluid. I've since run new fluid right through the system, so that's been done. And I did run down and get a new exhaust down at Right Price Exhaust at Slacks Creek. Uh, right, a whole new system. The whole thing's custom made because the other one was literally riddled with holes. It sounds great at that end, but still sounds like a tractor at this end. Anyway, box of life. In regards to the tune, I think it could be a little bit better, the tuning and the timing, but it gets about 440 k's to a full tank. I've done about 600 kilometers. Now, a 440 tank is pretty good. It should be getting around 500. Now, considering this car has sat for umpteen years hidden away and not been on the road, I think that's a pretty good achievement, especially, I mean, obviously after doing all of that mechanical work. I couldn't have been able to drive it long if I hadn't gone ahead and addressed all those problems. Hope you get something out of today's video, folks. It's not just about fixing the Subaru as such. This can be applied to a lot of old cars, what I did in today's episode. Um, the clutch cable thing is a little different. I've never had that before in a car, even old 70s cars, but I like it. It's very easy to maintain. You don't have to worry about your fluids and you can make adjustments when necessary. So I like that. Remember, there's three things that I'd love you to do. Like the video and subscribe, please, and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm releasing cool YouTube stuff like on these cars. And thirdly, now oh, I want to hit 5,000 subs by the end of the year, by the way for 2023 that's the goal and last but not least please if you can it would be lovely if you could donate some dollars to the channel it helps me keep creating the content you like and rescuing these cars they're rescue rides i call them we rescue revive and rehome that's the whole idea of flipping my ride as well it's not just about the sale and this may not be sold yet donate if you can there's a link on the main banner on the front of my youtube channel little tab there and I'll try and put a link down in the comments. Let us know what you thought about today's mechanical work on the Subaru. If there's any tips you can give me, please let me know. Um, that doing the drive shaft thing, I don't like that. All right, find it, buy it, fix it, flip it, have some fun along the way and remember Rushy and we'll catch you next time on Flip My Ride. Ciao. I've got to sit up straight. I don't like an old hunch, hunchman. Sit up straight, mate. Puff that chest out. And finish. Only five takes. Stop recording.